stealthily erotic aspect of Kiki's delivery service. Well, what I mean by stealthily erotic is that what obviously seems erotic is not erotic at all. But the parts where people find nothing sexual are where Miyazaki slipped in many erotic aspects or messages. For example, when people see Kiki's delivery service, you find Kiki's underwear showing. Many people think that's erotic. Well, other female protagonists in Ghibli animes, they never show this. Of course, it's impossible for Naushka. She wears leggings all the time. For example, in this scene in Raputa I talked about, Shita says, stop, and holds the robot soldier's head. The wind blows and almost shows her undies. It's close, but we cannot see it. However, Kiki's underwear can be seen from the scene where she first flies. It even appears in a scene when she asks her dad to pick her up. It's what women call drawers. It's underwear that people are allowed to see. In other words, drawers are like short pants. That's why some people say it's not erotic. This is a scene where we see Kiki's laundry are hung out. She was soaked to the skin, so she hung out everything she was wearing, even her ribbon. Of course, the lineup included her underwear, like a gigantic flag fluttering. This means that what Kiki is showing are not drawers, the panties that can be flashed, but her actual panties. She actually shows her real panties. I loathe myself for saying panty this and panty that, but why is she showing her underwear? Some might say, come on, it's just the erotic thing, but they're wrong. Miyazaki would not make an erotic scene this way. Never. The panty is not shown by accident. It's meant to be shown. When you direct an anime, you control every image appearing on the screen. Like, you make an animator draw a picture and tell someone else to color it with the color you designated. So Miyazaki is showing it. In Laputa, Miyazaki issued to the animators a zero tolerance policy for showing Shita's panties. Reversely, in Kiki, he must have issued a strong policy of showing Kiki's panties. Unless he precisely instructed the animators how it should be shown in each scene, it wouldn't be shown so consecutively. Kiki is the only Ghibli protagonist whose underwear is seen, I mean a lot. Regarding this issue, here it is, this Ghibli's textbook has a comment from a feminist heavyweight and a faculty of the University of Tokyo, Chizuko Ueno. A girl's body starts to exude a sexual aura. Her body becomes curvier and her breasts grow. Kiki is not an exception. This plain black witch cloth does not hide her body's curves. The underwear shown beneath her windblown skirt is like she is exposing the womanhood she should have kept hidden. Why do witches wear skirts instead of trousers, which are more reasonable to wear on a broomstick, like when riding a horse? Miss Ueno wonders. Nevertheless, Professor Ueno answers her own question as to why Miyazaki won't let the girl wear trousers. She clearly states that, I'm aware that Hayao Miyazaki has a fetish for young girls. She says the director is pedophilic, and he's showing what he wants to see. It's sad that a professor from one of the top Japanese universities looks down on Miyazaki or anime in general this way. But her logic simply contradicts with the fact that all the other Ghibli female protagonists don't show their underwear. In Kiki's delivery service, all the main characters are female. Kiki owes all her growth, training, and revelation to other female characters. A female movie for females. That's Kiki's delivery service. But despite the film being a thoroughly female story, Miss Ueno did not quite like this film. It's because for classic feminists, this film... I think I kind of understand that. It has many scenes that they would despise. For example, these three scenes are very typical. One is where the father picks up Kiki and she's so happy. And this should be vertical.
The next one is one where the baker makes her logo. After Kiki comes home from her first delivery, she finds her logo made entirely out of real bread. It was made by Mr. Osono, the baker, and Kiki hugs him with joy. So her logo, which is to women, a name or a business identity, is given by a man. And when she's happy, she hugs her daddy. She hugs the baker. Why the hell does she have to be hugging all the time? These things would be really annoying to them. And the third example. Finally, her boyfriend makes her an iron logo and puts it up for her. The logo so obviously represents the surname, a woman needs a man's permission to put it up, implying that women have to get married and have their husband's surname to be a well-acknowledged member of the society. Women should be pleased and hug men to express their joy. This interpretation is not unreasonable, and such scenes go on and on, enough to piss off Miss Ueno. Well, I have been kind of teasing Miss Ueno so far, and I apologize. I did kind of make fun of her. But Miss Ueno's concern is quite logical. Well, witches are intelligent, kind of women who go to college, and they were persecuted. The world we live in has a history of persecuting intelligent women who would have gone to college as a witch. There is a comment from a religious scholar, Akira Masaki. In the textbook for Kiki's delivery service, on page 235, he says, The broomstick is a symbol of male genitalia, a penis. And evidence backing his theory includes... This copper print by Goya in 1799. Actually, a typical image of a witch's broomstick with the brush at the back is something relatively new. Witches in fairy tales in the 19th century ride on their broomsticks with the brush pointing backwards. But in the era of this picture, in the 17th and 18th centuries, the time of witch hunts, the brush points forward. The brush is at the front, and this can clearly be recognized as a symbol of a penis. Harry Potter, Sally the Witch, all the modern witches fly with the brush at the back. This is because this symbolism started to make no sense over time. The advancement of women made it natural for them to take higher education and work outside their home. That's when the brush finally started to point backwards. We only know these resultant images, so took it for granted that they fly with the brush at the back. For us, it's just natural for women to be intelligent, but before that, the brush was pointing forward. A woman, being rational, like men, talking about politics, society, and other academic topics, that was regarded as masculinization of a woman. The witch was a symbol of such masculinization. Actually, witches were these women who were equally or more intelligent than men and were harshly persecuted by medieval Christian society. By the way, Jesus, according to Catholics, is like a pioneer of medical treatment for curing people. You know, those episodes of Jesus curing people, like when he told a person with weak legs to walk? They did, and when he said, open your eyes, a blind man became capable of seeing. They show how Jesus was a healer. So, in the Christian society, after that healer was gone, all the people could do was to wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. But there were these smart women privately doing what he used to do, heal people. These smart women used the big pot, the cauldron, to boil this funky stuff, like the root of a tree. And this transcended as another typical image of witches. Why did they do that? It's because what they made actually worked. So, Christianity made people believe that they could only be healed by prayers. 
But there were some women who thought that wasn't working. Of course, some men thought the same, but men were more likely to be under the Christian influence. So these women with practical views started making potions with a cauldron that actually worked. The Christian society saw this as hearsay, a forbidden fruit of knowledge. They didn't care if it's scientifically appropriate. It was knowledge that people should not have. So, medieval Christianity completely detested those women with their knowledge and persecuted them as witches. This is widely known in history. It's like your ABCs. So, Miss Ueno, of course, is well aware of this. So, I mean, you can see Kiki's delivery service and think that the girl regained her magic power by falling in love. Kiki lost her magic power due to her envy, but regained it by finding real love and became the star of the town. Nice. It's natural to see it this way, which is purely unacceptable to Miss Ueno. How dare you depreciate the history of women like that, she might say. Someone just commented, maybe she just doesn't know. Yes, she does. She has to know it. Even I know this. Miss Ueno has to know it. I really mean it. Let's go back to the topic. The topic was, why does Kiki show her underwear? Her panties. Hayao Miyazaki himself, here it is. In this book, he actually provides an answer to that. He gives a really straight answer, which he usually doesn't, on page 140. Showing her underwear in the middle of the town, Kiki definitely needed that as the final rite of passage. So, showing underwear in front of all people, the protagonist needed that as the final rite of passage. That's what Miyazaki said. This is the scene. The final showdown where she saves Tombo. Kiki's flying ability finally comes back. She holds on tight and the wind blows to flutter her panties with all the townspeople watching on. Miyazaki's comment saying she needed to show her underwear to townspeople means that Kiki knows that showing her panties is an embarrassing thing. Of course she does. She doesn't want to, but she has to. I'll explain this more in detail. This scene is quite close to the opening. Kiki flying in tandem with the Elder Witch. This is another scene where we see Kiki's panties. This is because of her poor flying skills. The Elder Witch asks her to turn the radio off, which is a simple operation, but Kiki can't remain focused and the broomstick wobbles and her panties are seen. Whereas the Elder Witch flies like nothing happened. So we see Kiki's underwear in her every embarrassing moment, where she makes mistakes due to her poor magic skills. The Elderly Witch flies elegantly, not once showing her underwear like Kiki does. She can keep her legs closed even while soaring over Kiki. No signs of panties at all. All things considered, this Kiki movie detects what talent is, as well as what the artisan is about. As I mentioned last week, it depicts the world of artisans. People have to go through embarrassment in front of other people to be the real artisans. The embarrassment that makes you want to disappear. But the next day, you show up in front of customers just to embarrass yourself, like showing your undies. People always find your weakness and you get embarrassed every time, so you try your best not to be embarrassed anymore. That's the way of the artisans. Kiki's underwear we see is just a sign of her poor magic power. Flying on a broomstick, her only magic. But her flying skill is not yet something she can show off to other people. But according to Miyazaki, she has to keep on showing her panties. Because she shows them, feels embarrassed, and it's the only way she learns to fly without exposing them. Until then, she has to hold on. This mentally twisted girl, Kiki. As I told you in the last lecture, she had overcomplicated her adolescence. So her ribbon is so huge, anyone can see through her self-consciousness. And she always shows her panties that she doesn't want to show. 
That's just devastating, especially from a woman's point of view. Trying to look cool with ribbons, but your underwear is showing. This is the expression of adolescence Miyazaki struggled so hard to come up with. Ladies who used to be girls see Kiki and feel uncomfortable. I think these things just send chills up and down their spines. In the end, Kiki makes progress. She was showing her panties everywhere, but in the end, she does make progress. In this scene, in the closing sequence, Kiki flies in tandem with Tombo. This upper image. If Kiki was flying in tandem with a man-powered aircraft in the earlier scene, her underwear would be exposed for sure. But not in this scene. We only slightly see it when she goes down to help Tombo when his aircraft decelerates and hits the sea surface. It does still show a little. It's also slightly shown when she makes a landing together with Tombo. Only slightly, almost unnoticeably. As I said, underwear seen in Kiki's delivery service represents Kiki's immature magic power. But in the end, it's improved to a level where she almost completely manages to conceal her underwear. We see a glimpse of it when she's trying to rescue Tombo. So, she writes that she sometimes feels sad, but all in all, she loves this town, and she proudly flies away in the closing scene. So she writes to her mom, her family, I still sometimes feel sad, but all in all, I sure love this town, and flies away without showing her underwear at all, and we think, Kiki, you've grown! But in the very end, she makes one last flash and then flies away. You see? This is supposed to be funny. The girl proudly writes, I'm doing okay to her family. But this girl who thinks she's doing okay still shows off her panties. So she still has so much room for improvement. That's the humor of the scene. Still, she has matured enough to write letters telling her parents to not worry about her. I mean, if it was Kiki at any point before this closing scene, her letter to her parents would be like, I want to go home and I'm lonely. That's what she would have written. Or she won't write any letters in the first place. She won't whine and puts on her brave face to say she's okay. She's learned to smile even if it's tough. This is how she grew in this Kiki's delivery service. She tries hard, never gives in, like the elder witch she first met, saying, I'm okay. But in the very end, she flies away while giving the audience a final huge panty exposure as some weird joke. The end. So now you understand that Kiki's exposure in the film is not an erotic thing. It's actually a message to artisans. Make an embarrassment of yourself as much as you need and keep training so someday your panties will not be exposed. It sounds like a good movie, but as I told you, the second topic is about the stealthily erotic aspect of the film. So obviously, erotic things are not erotic at all. There is nothing erotic about her panties being shown. Eroticism is hidden somewhere where you don't see it. So where can that be? If panties are not erotic, then what is? Sorry to have kept you waiting so long. Actually, in this anime, all the recurring female characters other than Kiki have something in common. This is what I mean. Four characters important to Kiki. Kiki's mom, Kokiri. Osono, the baker. Maki, the designer who lives across the street. And the sophisticated old lady in the house with the blue roof. They have something in common. I chose these images so it's easier for you to find it yourself. The answer is... They all wear piercings. I think those who have a partner who are in an ongoing sexual relationship wear red piercings. The old lady wears a turquoise blue pierce. It indicates that she used to have such a relationship, but now she doesn't. Kiki, of course, no. 
Not even in the closing sequence. So Miyazaki, when asked in an interview, what happened between Kiki and Tombo? He strongly said that Kiki and Tombo are not in a relationship. They are just good friends. So it is likely for us to see them dating. No, Tombo is our friend. Why did he say that? I'll explain to you later. So Kiki has no earrings, no piercings. Yes, I know. You've all been wondering. So Ursula, the artist, how about her? Ursula, the artist, here. Ursula, the artist, has no piercings. The elder witch has heart-shaped gold earrings on her ears. Ursula wears hair ties instead of a ribbon, the symbol of self-esteem. However, Ursula suddenly wears this big hat when she goes in front of people. When she comes to the city, she wears this big hat. Miyazaki drew these big things on people's heads as a symbol of their self-consciousness. In the woods, Ursula has such a free attitude, but she's so scared to come to the city. That's why she wears the big hat. So Ursula is still in training, she's comfortably living alone in the woods, but she is not as tough as Kiki to live in the city alone. Ursula has her own weakness that keeps her from living in the city alone. The meaning of the piercings, well, people can have their own ideas, but they are worn under a certain rule, that is for sure. The Kiki film, well, it has surprisingly a lot of messages that are slipped in parts you don't feel are erotic at all.